Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 14 today and we're back for big action as the league splits in Wales. We've got transfer deadline day in January as we desperately replace all of those midfielders and expiring loans from the January window. And of course we've still got our chairman fighting against us. So no actual transfers from other clubs and no loan deals as well. We face TNS today who again are making a right meal of chasing us here. And it looks like with a victory today we're almost certainly champions. So if you're looking forward to this episode and enjoying this Builder Nation series, please do put a thumbs up on the video, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM21 content. You can catch up with all the various different series in the eye above and thank you again for your incredible support. But let's have a look at what's going on here because we're already almost at the stage where we're starting to think Builder Nation instead of Builder Club and I'm almost thinking, do we sell Zabret to TNS if they come in? Because we need to make the other side stronger. TNS have made a right meal of chasing us this year. We got the gap down to five points because we were dropping points. And then they've done the same. They drew at Pennybont. They've lost away at Haverford West. I just don't quite get why they're making it look so difficult. They've got a better side than us on paper. They're professional as well, so there's no excuse in that regard. But they're still finding it difficult. So we're going to try and keep an eye on that over the next six months. Of course, I hope we win the league. And it means that we're guaranteed to get out of financial trouble because it means we'll have Champions League qualifier, Europa League qualifier and Europa Conference. So even if we lose every game, which is quite likely, we'll still get 500 grand or so in, which will just wipe out all of the problems. Whereas for TNS, they've got the money this year. They're just not using it well. So if we very first go and have a look at their transfer window, they've not let anyone go this January and they've bought in the one player from Aberystwyth. Not a game changer, but a backup centre forward and he's doing a job for them. But I'm a little disappointed they're not doing more, given the European money they've got. On our side of things though, it's been a desperate runaround to try and replace people. Ted Malden's unhappy and he's starting to get offers over 10 grand now. So we're sort of just edging towards a do we have to think about it stage. But for me that's still a bit low. We've let one player leave the club. We've had the three low knees go back, Coyle, Craig and Gutierrez. So we're still a little bit short in certain areas. We've let Steve Thomason leave the club too. He's gone to Carmarthen for £450. And that's just because we've got good players in at the club. We didn't really need him in the squad. We've got Hankin coming through at right back who seems to be doing well for us. And we've got another centre half agreed to come in. Which means that Thomason basically won't be needed. He's been struggling with injuries a lot anyway. Only made the one sub appearance in the league for us. And he goes over to Carmarthen and we wish him the best for the future. But as we keep managing that wage bill, we've got two additions to the club. The two midfielders have been replaced, essentially. So George Glendon, a 26-year-old midfielder. I'm sure he started out in City's academy. He did. He then went to Fleetwood, Carlisle and Chester before coming across to Bangor. And Chester seems to be that point between the two. If they've been at Chester and Wrexham, they'll then come across to Wales. So it does help in that sense. But three-star ability, three and a half potential massive downgrade on wages and only a slight drop in ability. I think it's all we can ask for. He's natural as a Carolero, he can cover as a holding midfielder and he's versatile enough. So one cup start so far and a good performance he produced. The other man to come in, another familiar name for Football League fans is Liam Nolan. So he, after coming through the famed Crew Academy, has had spells at Southport, Accrington, Halifax, where I'm sure we managed him briefly in last year's head coach. And then Macclesfield, he signed for them just as they were going under before having a season at filed in game. So he looks like another good solid signing. He's okay in central midfield in the Carolero role. He can cover at centre half, he can cover in the holding role. And he gives us a lot of squad depth across the board. He's very versatile, he's very good at what he does. And if we can get him match fit and play him well, he could well contend for a starting spot. We have also got a deal agreed that may come in on the deadline day. And we were just waiting for Thomason to go out, really. For the same wages, Jack Boddenham can come in. He's a 22-year-old Welsh player. Came through at Cardiff. Had spells on loan at TNS and at Hereford. And he's got three-star ability, four-star potential, according to the scouts. Seems like a no-brainer, really. A very cheap wage he's agreed to join for. So I think he might be the next one in the door. I must say that the interest has sort of called in Zabret from TNS. Not really much going on there. It does look like there's interest from English clubs for a few players. And the only one I'm thinking about transfer listing is Ben Atkinson. He's out of contract the end of the year. 
He's fallen right down the pecking order. Even with the new signings, they're better than him. He's been a good servant, but for the wage he's on, for the ability he's got, I feel he's the one that might have to be sacrificed. So hopefully, as we continue to try and build a nation, he'll find a club in this country. But we'll wait and see if that's the case. Thomason did. I'm not so sure when it comes to Atkinson. But let's have a quick look at our schedule to see how things have been getting on. Not had a huge amount of games. I mean, the thing we're glad of the most is that Barla finished in 7th before the league split. Because we drew against them again on New Year's Day. We were quite lucky to do so. We came from behind twice. Both Jimmy Spencer and Samuel Fanian got a goal. We then won 2-0 at home to Newtown with a Fanian brace. And 1-0 against Lynette Kane McLaggen scored a brilliant goal. Hankin came off the bench after injury. Flanagan got his first start back. We got games for the likes of Gwennell in goal. Close between him and Shane Owen, who incidentally has been in the comments here. So thank you, Shane, for being a player and coming over. I do appreciate you giving it a try. Share it amongst the squad. See if any of them like what's happened. Probably not now, because not many are left in the eleven. So please apologise on my behalf. But of course, with some of them, the likes of Melo, we wanted to keep. We didn't get a choice. Torres left before we got a chance to play him. So we couldn't do much in some regards. But now we've got the top six twice in a row. Now, TNS have dropped most of their points against the poorer sides in the league. The Haverford West, the Flint Town. We've talked about those sides. Whereas we've dropped most of our points against good sides and Bala. Of course, the derbies are always a bit like that. But I'm interested to see how this goes. We start with three home games in a row after heading to TNS. So if we lose that one, at least we've got a way to bounce back. But I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. So the plan is we'll show TNS today. We'll show TNS and a cup game in the middle. And then hopefully we'll have the final game of the season, a title and a Welsh Cup final. But they're all a long way off. So let's not get too excited just yet. We'll keep an eye on what TNS do on deadline day. We'll see if we've got any more action to come. But firstly, it is Bangor City travelling to TNS. And let's go and see the lineup for today. So here we go. Four changes suggested. They keep going for Moore and Molden to swap. I really don't understand it. They're asking for Henry Jones to come in because he has played quite well for us. And we've started to have a few injury troubles as well. So a couple just coming back, but Ericsson and Garcia have been out recently. And we've had to dip into the youth team just a little bit. So it's something we've got to keep our eye on as well. But in terms of the lineup for today, the only real decision was Glendon or Nolan out of the two new signings. I've gone for Glendon because he's played once already. He's a bit fitter. He's a bit more naturally settled in. And his match sharpness is improving slightly. So I'm going to stick with that for today. Most of these boys have had two weeks off because there was a gap between the season starting again. Particularly after the league split. The cup game was then a reserve side largely. So many of these haven't played for a while. But we've gone back to what we think is our strongest 11. It's Zabret who's in goal. Linked with TNS but very much staying now by the looks of it. The back four of Owen Moore, Jack Bolton, Harbottle and Malden at centre-half. Goodridge, Boots, Glendon and Kretschmar at the midfield four in the diamond. Goodridge now the starting holding midfielder. We've lost Liam Coyle. Garcia's been out injured. Goodridge is now the base of the diamond and he will be that way for the rest of the season. Fanny Ann and Spencer are up front. Spencer's been a real disappointment this season. If there's one player I change in the summer, I think it's him. Seven goals and four assists and a lot of poor performances. It's the fact that when he doesn't score, he has a poor game almost every time. So I think for the biggest wage at the club, he's probably the man on his bike this summer. But let's get into the first game. It's TNS before transfer deadline day. Let's hope we can keep that gap at the top eight points or bigger. Let me know what you think will happen. So from the cup game, it is listed as eight changes in total. It's a good side for TNS. Ryan Brobble's been linked with a move away, but he's still there at the moment. John Routledge in midfield. Keston Davis, we talked about the skipper. It's a good side and it's a close game, but TNS have dropped silly points this season. If they come into form now, they might be all right. We're still yet to lose this season, but we're playing the top five clubs over and over. And if we do that twice in a row, I'd be surprised if we finish invincible. A lot of draws, but we'll take it. I'd rather that than losing one or two. Into the first half we go. We've had the first shot, but it wasn't worthy of a highlight. And we pick the ball up again at right back with more. It does seem that our tactic just sort of squanders TNS a little bit. They do struggle against it. Not in terms of dominating the play, but in terms of creating good clear-cut chances. It's not something they often do against us. As Boot picks it up in the middle to Glendon, over the top, which Fanny Ann can chase, but Longelo will get there. Oh, he's giving it away. That is awful. And Jimmy Spencer puts it in. It's an amateurish mistake from the other professional side. And Jimmy Spencer must have heard the criticism. 1-0 Bangor City. 
And we're back just two minutes later to play out from the back with Zabret again. He's got time to find Morden, who gives it to Moore. And actually, we look quite comfortable early on. Though Keston Davis wins that header to Duncan. It's a long Galo who needs to make up for his error there. He's overlapping on the left wing. Moore will close him down. Doesn't stop the cross though. It's into the box. Duncan on the rebound. How's that stayed out? Brilliant defending. Bodies on the line. And somehow, we remain 1-0 up. Well, just under 10 minutes to the break. It's gone a bit quiet recently. But TNS back with a free kick there. Headed away, Longalo again at left back, been involved in everything so far, both good and bad at both ends, as Barrett picks it up in midfield. He's got the left back overlapping again, instead tries to go back, he's forced all the way to the keeper. It's brilliant pressing to be fair from our midfield four. Those central players in the diamond, they still get wide. I've tried to shape it as close to the loot and real life tactic when they won League 2 and League 1, or what came second in League 2 and won League 1, and we seem to have got it almost down to a T. But against TNS, it might not be enough. A very good side, and they're playing good football here with Duncan. Longalo overlapping again. Through ball to the centre forward, and Zabret down to his right to save. Brilliant goalkeeping. And despite TNS dominating against us again, we remain ahead again. It seems to be a pattern of these games. It cannot be a coincidence. We've encouraged the lads, we're into the second half and we're straight back with TNS on the ball. As Hugh switches to the left back again, absolutely everything has gone through him today. One big mistake and lots of created chances. And he just about grazes the crossbar there. We've got a free kick to defend on the left. Brobble puts it in. And this time Keston Davis heads just over. It's been a great display from TNS. They've dominated the match yet again. But they cannot get a result against us. I don't know what it is. As Malden picks it up at the back. It almost reminds me in reverse of what we had with Balamina in the Cliftonville save last year. We just couldn't get a result. And by the way, as I say that, Balamini United, the mobile save in the eye above, as Jimmy Spencer puts it just wide. My first ever go at a mobile series. I'll be interested to know what you think. As Ryan Brobble puts a corner in. Oh, Keston Davis wins the header. Straight as a Brett who saves. TNS will be wondering how on earth they're behind here. And I couldn't answer that question, so Lord knows how they will. As Harbottle goes over the top. Barrett wins it back to Routledge, to Hughes, to Holland. One over on the left in Longalo. He's got two down the line, but he's keeping it himself for now. And he's been forced backwards again to Barrett. Plays to the left back again. In behind to the striker. It's over hit. And Zabret will come and smother. A very interesting start to this half. TNS must have had five chances in ten minutes. And they haven't made any of them count. As Moore picks it up from Malden on the right. Through ball to Fanny Ann. And if we nick a second like this. Oh, he's at the post. He got through one on one. And we nearly wrapped it up. And that is the difference with us. On the counter, we have such a threat. And TNS just can't cope. Still 1-0 with our only shot on target. And TNS will be scratching their heads. As we're playing out from the back again with Zabret. Finds Ted Malden, short as centre-half. Having another good game despite being unhappy at the club. It has not affected his performances. As Glendon gets it in the centre circle. Back to Goodridge and now Boot. He's got two over the top. Play short to Glendon instead. Out to left back Bolton, inside to Harbottle, up to Spencer, flicks on for Fanny Ann. The keeper comes and doesn't make it. The offside flag has gone up. It was tight, but it remains 1-0. We don't deserve a second, but we would have loved to have taken it. Glendon starting to struggle physically, not match fit yet. So let's just bring Liam Nolan on. Same role, same position, and with 20 to go, it looks like we're going to get another smash and grab. Just over 10 minutes remaining. I'm going to replace Kretschmar with Henry Jones. I don't really want to make the third sub at the moment. We look quite comfortable. I might bring Hankin on at right back just for stoppage time because we've got the youngsters on the bench. Two minutes added on. Hankin on at right back for more. And we've nicked a 1-0 win yet again. How on earth do we keep doing this? TNS battered us again. Six shots on target from 11 efforts. 44% possession. That doesn't matter. We had the lower expected goals. We had far less corners, far less attacks. But with one shot on target, we score one goal and an individual error at the back for TNS. And Bangor City have almost wrapped up the title. So we're going to go and tell the lads we're pleased. The performance was rubbish. The result was sensational. And the story says the same against TNS. Connor's key yet to play, of course. They could be our closest challengers here. And TNS will be devastated considering that the fact that they've got the professional side. I can't see the manager lasting long. But we'll get the Connors key result, we'll skip ahead to deadline day and see if there's any more action in and out of Bangor City. We haven't yet got to the Welsh deadline day. We've got to the English one though 
and Domenico Serafino has again decided to ruin my transfer window. Ted Malden, our best player by a million miles, has been sold for £19,000. And that's not even up front. Only five grand of that's up front. 20% sell-on clause, yes. A free friendly with Lincoln, great. But Ted Molden has been sold for peanuts. He's a fringe player there. We can't get him back on loan. We can't do anything. And we've just lost our best player, our leader on the pitch. And for absolutely nothing. It doesn't put a dent in our debt. If he'd funded it for three more months, we were going to have the chance to build in Europe. And Ted Molden's gone from that. I am so annoyed by it. We have got a couple of deals potentially going on while that happens. Nobody else has left the club yet. Nobody else has joined. Uh, but it looks like James Cook, another centre-half, is off. He's a backup now. He's going to Barrytown United. And the other centre-half that we had on a free agent deal, he'll definitely be coming in now. Boddenham will join in a day. But we'll be back on the Welsh deadline day, unless there's any more chaos to deal with. Well, we reached transfer deadline day here in Wales. And it's going to be a difficult one for us. We're going to take part in it. We have managed to get a really top quality target man on trial. That man, Amadi Holloway, played for Bristol Rovers back in the day, I think. No, it's Bristol City he was at. My apologies. I'll get absolutely pelted for that. But he's played for Bath, Newport, Wickham over 50 times, Oldham 60 times, Shrewsbury 30. He's played in India and he's played in Australia as well. He's a really good player. At the moment, his wage demands are slightly too high for what we can afford. Albeit he wants the same as Spencer, basically. But what I'm tempted to do is we'll keep him here for a week or two on trial. Fingers crossed no one else comes in for him. And then we can get him on slightly lower wages as he settles in at the club. We know O'Grady's going to go at the end of the year. There's not going to be any need to replace him in the squad if we can get Amadi Holloway. So fingers crossed on that front. But let's get through deadline day. One player to come in on a free... And hopefully no more going to be taken from us. An interesting start indeed. Firstly, James Cook has left the club to join Barry. £400 plus a sell-on clause. But we're strengthening the nation. We're building the nation. That's what we want to do. We're starting to get offers to get better director of football in. Unfortunately, their attributes aren't much better. And our one's done alright. He's put an offer in for Luke Cummins from Barry, ironically. Now, he's a very good player, and in normal circumstances, I'd take him, because he's the closest to Malden we can get. But I want to strengthen the nation, and he's got another 18 months at Barry. So I'm going to walk away, I'm going to let them keep him, and they'll be joined by James Cook at centre-half. Let's make the other side better, let's make this lead very good. I tell you what, our director of football is very busy trying to do something today. James Ball is the next man he's going in for. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder, he doesn't really suit us, and he's not great. I remember him from Stevenage, just round the corner from us. He played for Stockport beforehand. He's a good player, but unfortunately not for us today, I'm afraid. So he's not going to be coming in. We're definitely keeping McCauley Flanagan. You're not getting him out on loan. But it's been a very strange start to deadline day. Maybe our director of football will find a gem. Don't forget, Dominico's blocking everything we do with transfers and loans. So we're in the free agent market, or we get something special from Ross Jenkins. Let's wait and see. Ryan Law is the next one he's made an offer for. We've rejected the deal for Ball, but we need a backup left back. So if that wage is low, we'll probably stick with it. He's a decent enough player. I'm just hoping we'll be able to do something here. And here we go. 130 quid a week for a backup left back. I mean, he looks all right. He's 22. He's got a decent personality. I think we have to take him. Ryan Law will come in and he will be our backup left back for the rest of the season. Not the ideal solution, of course. We've got to bear in mind, we might not keep Bolton next year. We might not until the finances come from the first European games. We might not be able to do much at all. Jake Walker has got a bid made now. He's a natural right back. I suppose we haven't got a backup right back bar Hankin. But it doesn't mean I'm going to sign Walker, I'm afraid. He's not going to come in. This man is going mad. Lorne Bickley he's made an offer for. He's not very good either. He's not going to be coming in. Emmanuel Dizarouve, I believe that is, is the next one he's made an offer for. We're holding out at the moment for Amari Holloway. Another one, Josh Thomas. He's a very versatile player. He might be a bit more useful. Right back, holding midfielder, centre mid. All two and a half star. So what's the wage? 130. Now, is that one I have to take? I'm looking at that thinking I probably have to look at that deal, don't I? I mean, he's not going to be much use after this year. That's my only problem. And do I want to keep getting players in who aren't going to contribute much? He's aggressive. 
He's more naturally a fullback. So no, do you know what? We're going to resist. We've got young players who deserve a chance. And I've got to do that. It's been a busy deadline day in Wales. We'll keep an eye out on the other clubs at the end. But so far, just the left back joining us. As there's an offer for Brandon Goodship. He's played at Weymouth recently. Went to South End. Didn't quite work out for him at the higher level. So we'll cancel that one too. Christian Sadie is next. 19 year old striker. We're going to reject that one too. It is not good spending from our director of football. Now, Jack Boddenham, he's the one who is going to come in that was pre-agreed and delayed for a week. His is a two and a half year deal. We've made an offer for Jane Mingy. He's not going to come in either. He's another backup Carolero. So we're going to cancel that one quickly. But Jack Boddenham has joined the club. A central defender with three star ability and a like for like replacement for Malden, albeit nowhere near as good. The Welsh window has finally closed. We're going to keep our eyes peeled on Amari Holloway. He will hopefully join us in the next couple of weeks. But let's just see if TNS did anything. Connors Key lost their game as well. Really disappointing on that front. But let's have a look at the deadline day transfers. Nothing from TNS. One player out on loan. Who else have joined teams? It's only Barry signing Cook and Haverford West signed Comfrey, who's a backup goalkeeper. And that's it. That's so disappointing. It's something we found quite frustrating, to be honest, when we were at Cliftonville in FM20. I'll be fair, Haverford West are loaning players from Stoke. There's a bit more going on across the board and no small transfer fees like the ones we've sold. But I'm not particularly inspired by it. I'm more devastated that we have lost our best player for less than £20,000 in guaranteed fees. Such a disappointment. And without Ted Molden, the claps might still be on. I think we've got far enough ahead to win it. If we'd lost that TNS game, I would have probably been saying something different. But winning the cup now, staying 11 points clear, it doesn't look likely. So we will be back to face TNS at home on the 12th of March. We should also have a cup tie around the 20th or the 19th then, if we get through to the semis. And then fingers crossed, we will also have a youth intake as well. So if you're looking forward to all of that and the rest of the season at Kastrup Banga City without their best player, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. Turn that notification bell on to get alerts every time we go live on the channel. And of course, we've got our FM21 mobile story, which you can catch up with in the eye above. But thank you so much for watching, for supporting this channel and the podcast channel as well. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time for more Bangor City action as we try to wrap up the Welsh Premier League title.